and that competitive character of these courses must be evaluated in a case-by-case -case basis, taking into account their legal and economic context. What we will try to show with these pleadings is that economic and legal I'm sorry, the context of this course makes it possible for this course to marry to it an exemption in Article 101 number 3. Firstly, we believe that there are gains of efficiency and fair shares for consumers, since due to this agreement, medicines for lung cancer with valyric acid have become widespread, and valyric acid is considered to be a revolutionary substance in the treatment of lung cancer. Furthermore, there is no elimination of competition, since, as we will show later on, the licensee may freely exit the agreement, he will be on an equal playing field with his competitors. And finally, the no challenge clause is indispensable for the licensing agreement at hand. And this is where I would like to focus uh, to take some minutes. We believe that this happens due to a matter of contract equilibrium. The technology transfer block exemption regulation of 2014 considers that no challenge clauses are restricted on negations in its Article 5.1b. And the guidelines for the application of Article 101. Uh, this regulation is applicable in uh, the present case. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. In fact, we believe that the, the applicable regulation should be the 2004 version of the TTBR, since for a, principle, for a matter of uh, judicial security, that version has been the version uh, in, in effect uh, for, most, uh, for most of the time of the, of the agreement. However, we believe that right now the 2014 versions should be the one considered, since as the European Commission serves as this court has stated in the cases masterful and delicious, as your intake of competition policy, European competition policy, we believe that you should look at its current view on the uh, on the on the version. This is the that should take into account something that will happen in the future, and now it will be uh, in the Past. So there is two uh, exceptional regulation during the contract. One is from uh, 96 till 2004, and the other from 2004 till 2014. And even in 2014, we have a period, a delay period for accordance with the new regulation. But as we know from the fact of the case, this case is not uh, the, the contract is not more uh, valid. Yes, thank you, Excellency. But in fact, we believe that the, the, applicable, the, the applicable rules in the regulations the, that we will allude to have not changed in the new versions of the TTBR. So, in fact, there is no difference of the version of the regulation we are referring to. And the guidelines for the application of Article 101 to technology transfer agreements state that no challenge clauses are exempted due to a presumption that the license served holds the more bargaining power than the licensee. It is an example of the principle of the weaker party protection work. However, this is not the case with the agreement hand. And to terminate the agreement without cause on one year's notice. Primarily because uh, the licensee the clause prevents the licensee to be released from an invalid patent. In the meantime, the licensee is obliged to pay royalties and for a patent that has been irrevocably declared invalid. Uh, even though the withdrawal of invalid patents is in accordance with public interest, the public usually lacks the means or the incentive to challenge the validity of the patent. Therefore, the, the licensee should be allowed to challenge the validity of a patent that is the core of the licensing agreement. Honourable members of the court, the licensee and consequently the public should not have to pay tribute to those who are granted such a monopoly in error. And uh, we'd like to point out that um, uh, the objective of Article 101 is to protect competition by, uh, by being the means of uh, promoting consumer welfare, uh, as uh, is uh, in accordance with the guidelines on the application of Article 101 to technology transfer agreements. Coming to our last argument, uh, we would like to stress that, uh, that since the block exemption cannot apply in this case, we would like to, to also, uh, to also uh, note that uh, the license agreement does not, uh, does not, uh, does not uh, fulfill another requirement of the technology transfer block exemption regulation, and that is the market share thresholds. Between non-competitors, the market shares of the combined parties must not exceed 30%.
However, in this case, and in every case, uh, the, li the, the market share of the licensor is to be calculated on the basis of the sales of the licensor and all its licensees of products incorporating the same license technology. In this case, apart from civil laboratories, other three pharmaceutical companies have entered into similar agreements with Valorant Enterprises. Ergo, the presence of products incorporating the, the, the <coughs> valoric acid in the market is prominent. Between, uh, the, the four pharmaceuticals together, honorable members of the court, have, uh, uh, the four pharmaceuticals together have, um, are, have uh, the market shares uh, cover, uh, include, um, excuse but me, the also together control yeah, 70%. Right, but the license, I mean, the, is the, the supply. Your Excellency, to the Flyder case, uh, in paragraphs 21 and 22, uh, where this very court has stated that we think the European Competition Network, a model leniency program designed to achieve the harmonization of some elements of national leniency programs, was also drawn up and adopted in 2006. However, that model program, like, likewise, has no binding effects on the courts and tribunals of the member states.
resumption of infringement. And you can see that by result recycle 57 of the Zen directive, that states that the final decision of the national competition authority should not be relitigated. Really Furthermore, the competition policy review from the competition, competition director general of the European Commission of January 2015 says that its objective is to avoid relitigation really of the final of infringement in damages. So, so to is to the burden of proof to the victim. But in this case, there is no final decision, Your Excellency. Which brings me to the second sub question. Article 9 does not apply in this case. So there is an evident breach of Article 47 of the Charter because the National Competition Authority decision was not reviewed by a court with full review powers. But even if it were applicable, and that's what we want to discuss, it would always constitute a presumption incompatible with Article 47 of the Charter because we have not, our day, we have not had our day in court. Right. The irrefutability of the presumption makes it a violation of the right to a fair trial and effective remedy. And th this has many consequences. The court in the damages action would be totally bound to a decision from a different court, which is in the case from a, even a from a different uh, jurisdiction. And in most European countries, the, the review of administrative courts is of mere legality. Therefore, in most countries, such as this case, the administrative court would be unable to exercise full review powers as mandated by the European Court of Human Rights decision, Manorini. Council, how would you define full review? Because I'm a bit confused here. What, what did the court state in Manorini? What is full review? And where did we, or the justice, state this as well? Thank you for your question, Your Excellency. Uh, full review powers, uh, uh, as stated in the case Mandarin, uh, requires that the, that the courts be able to examine both the merits and the legality of the, of the question at hand. And uh, we bring this case, um, the, the court should take into account this case, because uh, as Article 52 of the Charter states that the Convention uh, the, the charter should be interpreted according to the convention, and as so the, the, the court is not bound by that decision, but should take into account as the court of human rights is the one responsible to interpret the convention. May you proceed, Your Excellency? Yes, but you didn't address my, my final sub question. In which case did the Court of Justice or did we already, or did we already accept this principle? Is there a case where we confirmed Mary? Uh, uh, I cannot uh, give you a case for, for that, Your Excellency, but, uh, but uh, we must take into account that uh, the, as I, as I have said,